Howdy viewer. My fiance and I filled up this change jar recently. We want to buy a house. I went through it all. Counted it. Rolled it. Even sorted it by date. Can you guess how much fit in this thing? I kept some of the interesting dates. I mean not super interesting. 1969's of each denomination. 1984's. As well as some older coins that look newer than their newer counterparts. I mean who knows the stories behind some of these coins? many of which are older than I. From my brief research, it appears 1964 is the money date, the cutoff where the coin is worth more in its base metals than it is its face value. As far as pennies are concerned, I think it's 1983. If this is incorrect, please let me know. I'll be able to calculate how much time I actually wasted doing all this. But aha! Uh -huh. Maybe it isn't a waste, because I was looking at the Rocky Mountain Bikes website, and the 2020 Growler in particular, and there are some big changes on that sexy mama. So if you want to hang out while I count how many pre-83 pennies of each year I have, we can go over some of the change-ups. I did find a few of the pennies, as you can see. I did find a couple nickels too. But all the uh, dimes and quarters are pretty much cleaned out. I didn't find any of those. There's also a couple oddities, and uh, I remember throwing a couple hay pennies in there. Or not hay pennies, uh, wheat penny. Hey -er. I think the most glaring difference is the new model is a 29 inch trail bike, as opposed to Gertie's 27 and a half inch sport trail classification. The new model will come with a RockShox 35 Gold RL fork with the same 140 millimeters of travel. It has a 44 millimeter offset, which might be slightly shorter than previous, though this is a foreign territory to me. They are reducing the stem length by 15 millimeters to 35 and adding an AM branding. The handlebars will be stretched out 20 millimeters to 780 also with the added all-mountain branding. Another glaring difference is they have moved away from the SLX group set in favor of the SRAM Eagle. The NX shifter is coupled to a GX derailleur, which in turn is connecting a GX 30 tooth chain ring by way of GX chain to a PG 11 to 50 cassette, all of which is powered by the user via SRAM's BSA dub bottom bracket. Of course the wheels are going to have to change from the Alex 35s to WTB STI 30s, TCS 2.0, whatever that means, probably tubeless ready of some sort. They're sticking with WTB tires, slapping a Vigilante light high grip on the front, and a Trail Boss G2 light fast rolling on the rear. Both 2.6 inches, both TCS, and both Tritec. So that sounds pretty fancy. In case you can't tell from the video what I'm doing, I'm making rows of decades. So that long, mostly complete row in the middle is 1970 to 1979. And then making stacks of similar, not similar, but exact same year. All right, where were we? The brakes are gonna be very similar. They're adding a four piston front caliper and likely keeping the exact same two piston rear calling it the Shimano MT420. It's 20 model points better than the 19 model. It appears the hubs will be identical, minus the SLX branding on the rear. And finally, it appears Rocky Mountain is entering the dropper seat post market with their Tooney dropper post, which has the same 30.9 diameter post. Notice my bottom row here, 80 through 83. It's getting pretty hefty. So what about geometry? There's a lot of changes, and I'm not knowledge enough yet to say if these changes were made to have a similar feeling and rideability as the 27 and a half inch platform. Shucks, I don't even understand some of these numbers. These will be all the measurements from the large models. The oft asked about head tube angle has been slackened out by three degrees to 64. The head tube length remains the same. In 2020, the Growler had its stack dropped by 8mm to 627, and the top tube lengthened to 638mm from a straight 630. 
The new seat tube angle is 2 degrees steeper at 75 degrees, and the whole bike is 35 millimeters longer, making it 1,237 millimeters. The bottom bracket drop is raised 3 millimeters to 55. There will be a much longer reach from 438 millimeters to 470, a 5 millimeter shorter chainstay, or at least rear center, and the standover height will be shorter at 802 millimeters. Oh, is that a 1959 I see? Very nice. The lowest end Growler 20 will be available in this orange, yellow, and black color scheme, as well as my personal favorite, gray and black. The mid-range 40 model will be available in a maroon, orange, and black colorway, as well as a teal or aquamarine and black. While the Growler 50 is left with only one colorway, it is by far the classiest in a Guinnessy brown sort of way. Did you make a guess at how much we got out of this jar? Before I tell you, here's a few of the notable finds. There were three golden dollars, a John Quincy Adams and Millard Fillmore, both presidential $1 coins, as well as the good old Sacagawea golden dollar. As far as nickels go, I found 19 from 64 and 4 from 1962, as well as one each from 63, 61, 59, 57, and 54, for a grand total of 28 pre-65 nickels. As for the pennies, I think the best way to break it down is I found 172 from 80 to 82. From the 70s, I got 284. From the 60s, I got 88. 11 pennies from the 1950s and 4 from the 1940s. There was one from 1936, and the oldest penny I found was 1907. Well, if you're still watching, you're probably waiting for the grand total. The full amount of coinage we removed from this jar was 525 American USDA choice grade A bucks. Thanks for watching. I hope this was useful. If you want to see the full penny breakdown, here it is. Now roll up those coins.